come up and say the opening prayer, that would be really great. Everybody, aloha. Aloha. Can't hear you guys. Aloha. Aloha. Nice. My name is Max. I'm from Taiwan. And our team, alumni office team, going to present you guys uh, the Culture Shock workshop. And maybe you guys haven't noticed what Culture Shock is, but we will let you guys know and teach you guys how to overcome it and adjust yourself in BYU Hawaii campus. And so let's just go ahead and present this presentation. And so in alumni office, uh, alumni association, we cover student chapters on campus. Student chapters means the cultural groups. Say for example, see the Asia groups here. Uh, for example, Hong Kong student chapter. All the people from Hong Kong automatically belongs to Hong Kong student chapter. So that means whenever Hong Kong student chapter have any activity, the president will email each members, the Hong Kong student chapter members, so they will know what activity they can go to. So we have several student chapters, Taiwan, Thailand, Vietnam, Japan, Korea, and also see the Pacific student chapters. So before we start, let's see, um, who hasn't got the quiz in their hand? Please raise your hand. Okay, um, if we can help. Thank you very much. So just pay attention in our following presentation because this, this quiz can be your food ticket. After you submit the quiz, you can get food and the food is coming out pretty soon. So while we are saying, just pay attention to the question number four. You might want to know which chapter you belong to. So just keep in mind where you're from and you're automatic, automatically a member of that, your respective student chapter. See, so if you're from Hawaii, you're in Hawaii student chapter. If you're from Africa, which chapter you belong to? Africa student chapter. Okay, so all the student chapters, we supervise them. We help them reserve rooms, schedule, time to have activities. So that's our main goal. Alright, so welcome to BRU Hawaii. And obviously, BRU Hawaii is not your final destination of your life. You need to move on. So you are coming here to learn and after you graduate, you go forward to serve. That's our school mission. So there are three trans transitions to, we guys will help you along to have success during these three transitions. First one is coming to campus as new students. You are all new students or returning students. We welcome you and we want you to have success. That's why the BYUHSA and our alumni association have the, all these activities to help you to know this school and to meet everybody to get used to it as quick as possible and you can perform good in social life and academic life. And the second one is being successful as current students and after that return home as alumni. Alumni means graduated student. Alright, let's see the first one, coming to campus as new students. By the rest of hand, how many of you have seen your student chapter president or leaders or received emails from them? Only this few? You haven't seen your student chapter president yet? Or get any email or welcome from your student chapter members? No, okay, I'll, I'll chew them up <laughs> after this. Okay, we want all the student chapter leaders to welcome all the upcoming students and new students so they feel warm and like home. Because really, I, I'm from Taiwan. When I came here, the Taiwan student uh, welcomed me and teach me how to apply the bank account, the student ID card, everything helped me along with it. So I get used to it very quickly. And the second one, being successful as current students. 
we have so many activities in the student chapters. Uh, opening social, closing social, and cultural night, food fest, and gospel porn. All these activities will help help us have fun and have success, successful experience on campus. And that will help us build social life. So we don't feel alone. We are not alone. We don't feel isolated. Besides that, returning as alumni. We don't want you guys to come here and just have fun. We want you guys to have success career in the future. So we have career events and Skype events. Career event is we gather all the student chapter members to do research together, individually and in group about your home country job placement, internship opportunities, and um, all the, uh, about everything about career, how to do an interview, how to write your resume, do the research together. And you, for, for example, if you are majoring in biology, you want to find a um, job about biology back home. So if I'm from Taiwan, I want to find biology job in Taiwan. And if I realize, okay, it, it, that's too hard, I might want to consult with my advisor. So by doing this, everybody doing research together, we have more records and we share it to each other. And that's, that can help us find job easily after we go home. And then Skype events similar. We Skype with the alumni back home to ask their advice. What's the economic environment right now back home? How can I get a job about STM or about other stuff? Is that a good choice to do that? How can I be more prepared before I graduate? All this, we can talk with our alumni. They are experienced. Maybe they already have a good job in, in their home country. So you can talk, talk with them. And the last one is professional mentorship program that we have. Alumni office will assign you a mentor if you sign up for the professional mentorship program. A mentor means a good friend, a good teacher that can guide you and lead you to have success. So you can apply now or maybe when you are junior or senior, you can apply to have a mentor so he can guide you and find more opportunities for you. Next, as you all know, our campus is big. It has multiple cultures, the huge diversity um, cultures in our on, on campus. And all these diversity people gathered together will have something we call <laughs> cultural shock. <laughs> okay, you, if you want to laugh, laugh down. Okay, do you know how, how do you call this animal? Meerkat, right? I googled it this morning. <laughs> I, I saw them when I was young in the cartoon Lion King, but I don't know how, how do I call them. But yeah, we see three meerkats, but we see one little cute PD cat in the middle. What does that mean? We are, you usually see meerkat in Africa, but you don't see cat in Africa. That means the cat is just like us, like you guys, new students, coming to this beautiful island, Hawaii, and not familiar with everybody or the cultures, environments around. And we want to learn, just like the cat. He wants to fit in this new environment, but it's not the same, it's not the same as others. So we can still be ourselves, but we need to fit in ourselves. All right, there are four stages of cultural shock. Oh, you guys are smart already making notes now. Okay, the first stage is honeymoon, second, withdrawal, and third, adjustment, and the last, acceptance. First is honeymoon stage. Obviously, honeymoon stage is, you feel every, okay, I like this um, picture. Uh, our supervised, student supervised Teresa found this picture online. Just illustrated perfectly. Everything is, seems so beautiful, you're so happy, but you're confused. You don't know what's going on around you. But you think, oh, the ocean, the campus, everything is so beautiful, the culture is so beautiful. But you only see part of it, you haven't known everything. That's why you think everything is so good. And in this stage, you might have different feelings. Um, passive, overwhelmed, or everything so positive. And we will see what happens after a couple of months.
Okay. Aloha. Aloha. Now my name is Teresa and I'm from Auckland, New Zealand. Woo! And, Woo! Yes. And um, I'm the supervisor of the Student Alumni Association. Now, as we were talking about that, the honeymoon stage, you're like all happy and everything's like so cool. And then one or two, one or two months in, it hits you. The withdrawal stage. The stage where, oh wait, all this stuff is different. This stuff is not like, like home. All of that, you know, flashy beautifulness like starts to, starts to shatter. And um, in, the, in the withdrawal stage, you start to think people's behavior is like unusual and weird and they dress differently. Guys wear skirts. Do you see that around? Guys wearing skirts? Yeah. What the heck? And, um, <laughs> and um, yeah, people, people dress in their ethnic clothing everywhere. And one of the most important things though is the first initial greeting. And some people greet differently. And so we have a few videos that will show this. Typically, in the wait, I'll just I'll just let you guys watch it. Is the sound on? Oh wait. In Polynesia, it's, uh, how many of you guys have been kissed and hugged when you got here? Fifth. How many of you guys? Was it kind of weird? No? Well, for you from Polynesia, it's not kind of weird, is it? But, but for those of you that, that are not from Polynesia, it's a little weird, you know? These people are kissing you and hugging you, and yeah, it's a little bit different. And so you might end up thinking this, like in, in a lot of the cultures, like they get shocked and they're, um, that's like, what are you doing in my personal space? Or um, well, this might happen. Why at first I was like, what's going on? And you'll see why. Hey Jess, how are you? Hey, how's it going? I'm doing good. I was just about to talk to you. Oh my. And so, yeah, this, this was like, thing to me because I was like what the heck these people are like saying hi how are you and they're like all the way over there and I'm like I'm good I'm good thanks thanks but, um, and so for me that was like offensive because normally where we come from when you say hi how are you you like stay there and you're engaged in the conversation so that was a bit of a shock for me now personal space some of us from different cultures see personal space is different as you saw the Polynesians they're up close and personal, they're hugging you, they're kissing you. They're, and, uh, Latino cultures are like that too. And um, in some of the other cultures, personal space, like Asian cultures, they're like, if I don't know you, they're like, oh, you know, what are you doing? What are you hugging me? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? If they don't know you at all, they're like, what the heck are you doing? But um, we just gotta understand that for some of us, it's like slightly different, yeah? And now the second thing that's okay different the, or that you'll approach is language. So we all have different languages. We all have served missions everywhere. Like, if, how many of you served an international mission? Yeah. Well, how many of you are international? International. I can see is the, anyone from an international country. Oh, they can't hear me, sorry. Well, um, 
So, one of the most common things, how many of you have heard pigeon yet? Not including the Hawaiians, not including the kinds, okay? <laughs> Who's not Hawaiian? How many? Oh, only a few. Okay, so we're going to have, who is really good at speaking pigeon? Come on, some of you Hawaiians. <laughs> God, Louis. Yes, Louis. Come on, God, Louis. Louis. we want to, we want to show these people that I, I can't speak pigeon. Yeah, yeah. Louis. Yeah. 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 Louis. Woo! One more person. One more person. One more person. One more person. Who, who, are, who can speak good pigeon? Come on, I know you. you got, we got some Hawaiians out there. Done. <laughs> We're done. Sorry, I know you. You're a good actor, so you'll have to. You'll have to do this one again. Okay. So I have a script for you guys. Yeah, I want you guys to say. Well, which one wants to be speaker? One and which one wants to be speaker too? Just say it in English first, and then you say it in pigeon. Okay. Just say it in like the English first. Hey, what's up? How are you? I am good. What are you up to? <laughs> well, I have to go to class right now. Darn it, I am pretty hungry. Let's go eat after I finish class. Hey, I heard the waves are big this afternoon. <laughs> Do you want to go to the beach? Yeah, definitely. Let's go. <laughs> See you later. Okay. Okay, now on pigeon. Hey, brother, how's it? Alright, alright, I said good. What you up to, huh? What you up to? <laughs> Oh, but I gotta, I gotta go class right now, you know. Oh, nah, oh, I stay pretty hungry. <laughs> oh, we go eat after I finish class? Bro, I haven't here. Get big waves this afternoon. Lego Beach. Shoot. <laughs> we go. Shoot, see you later. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, in their, their conversation. And also for you that are international, some of you are not familiar, a lot of people use text ideologies like I don't know, OM, yeah, OMG, IDK, LOL. Most of you have seen it because everyone uses Facebook, so most of you have seen this. But Also we have different accents, like mine. Do most of you understand what I'm saying? Mine's pretty mellowed out now. I started conforming to the American ways. <laughs> but, <laughs> so people can understand me better. But honestly, when I first got here and I was working tour guide at PCC, a lot of people were like, what? And they asked me to repeat myself so many times so I had to change the way I said my mouth. But we have a lot of different accents and things that we say. Um, first of all, um, you'll probably come across this this language like, bro, mate, I reckon, mean, chirp, use. Oh, wait. Hang on. Oh, it deleted it. I don't know what happened to it. But how many of you have heard of the term sweet ass? Oh, my God. How many of you thought I just swore just then? <laughs> oh, you're probably going to hear it very often because all of us New Zealanders and Australians say sweet ass all the time. And I said sweet A-S, as in as. We say our S is like Z, so it sounds like we're swearing, but we're not. Just know that when we're walking around saying sweet as, bro, we're not saying what you think. Of this. <laughs> okay, respect. Now, different cultures. Uh, we have a lot of different cultures on campus, and a lot of a lot of cultures like are very respectful. So when you're saying, like, uh, when you're walking past and in between people and stuff, it's really important to say things like excuse me or pardon me 
or when you're approaching people about something, saying please and thank you and sorry, because a lot of people, um, especially the international cultures, will get very offended if you don't. And you'll probably hear people say things in other languages, like um, I know in, in mine, and in Tommy, they would say too low when they go past and they'll bend down when they walk past you out of respect. And so, yeah, just, just be aware of that because a lot of them will get offended if you don't, if you don't um, kind of show them a bit of courtesy in that way. Um, also, language courtesy. I'll let you guys watch the video because it's pretty... pretty So guys, we need to think of a topic of tomorrow's coming up presentation. Tomorrow. So I don't know that. You just think of a topic this whole week and still nothing? How can I mention that? Aloha. No. What about, uh, about why white people like coming here? <laughs> so be curious. I know it, it looks that's pretty exaggerated, but you know what I mean. A lot of the times, a lot of people speak languages in front of people, and it's kind of you know curious to try to speak the same language that everyone's speaking. Because um, as you know, like you don't want to be the one that's left out. Like, uh, are they talking about me or what? And but anyway, um, sometimes this could happen. I'm not sure if you guys can see the subtitles with police. behind their back and they were like, um, excuse me, I understand what you're saying, so being mean in any language is not cool. Okay, respecting other people's property. Now, I know in my culture, the what's your, mine is yours, and what's yours is mine applies everywhere, with everyone, the Polynesian culture. But, and not, not, not all cultures accept that, you know, so, um, we have, uh, video to demonstrate that, sorry. Hey, um, oh, is that my shirt? Oh, hi! Hey! Hi. Hi. Yeah, sorry, I haven't told you, so I was just gonna, like, borrow it just for oh. today and then, like, you know, return it. Okay, can you just not wear my stuff again? Well, I thought we were, like, roommates, we're friends, we can, like, Oh, yeah, we're friends, but I just, I'd rather not wear my stuff. Okay, sorry, you just don't want but... I just, okay, sorry. Okay, okay, I don't know your stuff, so yeah. Okay, alright. The key is to communicate with you everywhere. Ask before you take. Like, you probably, you guys probably don't understand this, but seriously, in the Polynesian culture, if your, your roommate's probably gonna <laughs> start like borrowing your stuff and you'll see them wearing your stuff down the street. Just make it clear, ask them before you take. Um, also, uh, the culture of sharing here on campus. We have a few videos to demonstrate that. 
visit the counseling center. Now the counseling services, they're super awesome and it's confidential and it's for free. It is free services. Now these guys, they are true professionals, they're all certified counselors and they are all here to help you. And I know I've, I've been to them a couple of times and they've helped me through like some, sometimes when I'm like so stressed out, just they help you see clear. So if you guys are feeling like depressed or like, isolated and you know homesick please go and see them they're here, they're here to help now we have Stevenson all right um my name is Stevenson and I'm from Hong Kong and uh, I'm a student coordinator in the Gaiyu Hawaii alumni office and today I'm going to talk to you just one little part in the adjustment so, um, a lot of you, I suppose, that is your first time being in Hawaii. How many of you is the first time being in Hawaii? Well, quite a lot. And I suppose that all of you are new students, right? Okay, good. So, now you're adjusting to the Hawaii culture. And now, you're also in school. So you want to do good in your academic performance. And now the school is doing the ninth semester role, which is they want you to be able to graduate in ninth semester. It's a short period of time. So how, how we can adjust it? What can we do to adjust? Well, the school already provides service to help you for this ninth semester. So we have the career services, they help you to prepare um, for your future career, they help you to write on your resume and cover letters and stuff like that, and also they will help you to figure out a major that you're probably interested in. So as I said before, ninth semester is not a long time, so go find them 
and figure out your major and start it as soon as possible. Second is that academic advisors, their main job is to um, do a map for you, an academic map, so you know what classes you're going to take in this ninth semester. And also we have student chapter advisors and support specialists. So as you see, the support specialists are the couple missionaries. They help you in your academic and also in your student life. So if you have any questions, you can go to them. Okay, um, in order for the school to help you, you need to first help yourself. So this is a, a framework of this um, student learning in BYU Hawaii. We want you, each student, to be prepared and engaged and improve. So in, to prepare means that we want you to read the materials before going to class. Engage means you attend in class and participate. Because that is the, one of the ways that you learn the most. I know for maybe most of the Asi Asian, Asian people, the ways that we learn, we go to class, we sit, we listen, and go home. We don't waste our opinions. But please, talk in class and participate. Because it will help you the most. And improves me. you go home and do your homework, be responsible of your assignments, and also, because of this experience that you're dealing with, they will help you shape you into a better person. So, um, unlike other college, we in BYU Hawaii have a lot of small classes. So you will have a chance to, you know, get to know your professors. So please talk to them, because they care about you. They care about your grades. And by participating actively in class, they will know how to help you to get your grades up. Other than that, we also have tutors around the school. We have Reading Writing Center. They help you on writing essays and papers. They, we have Math Learning Center, help you again stay with the math. And also we have Language Center, they help you on pronunciation. And each of the classes that you are, you are going to take will have your own tutor. So if the teacher are not available, you can go to them. So, I can promise you that as you do all these things, then you will get the grades that you desire and you will be more enjoy your Hawaii. Thank you, Stevenson. Yeah, the, like he said, I just want to reiterate that use use the services that are there for you because there's tutors, there's everyone. Don't just um, like just sit back, ask ask for help if you if you're struggling. Now, social life. Get, it, get to know your people, uh, the people at this university. We, like I said, 70 countries. We have people from so many different places. Step outside your box. Go make new friends from like different places. I know someone. I know someone. Uh, a lot of my best friends are from di different continents on this, on in the world. And so, I have like this network of people where I could just go stay where I want to. You can create here while you're here on campus. You can create like a professional network, you can have business people that you know in like different countries, that that sort of um, trait is proper, like for, it's a good thing, especially when you go on um, to be employed, that you know people in different countries. So it's like super important to like step outside your box, if anything, just to make friends every um, from everywhere, but also it's gonna help your career also in the future. So step outside your box, go out, go and attend the activities. now. BYUHSA, has anyone heard of that? You guys, student life, right? You guys um, got the student life presentation from them? Well, um, the student activities of BYU Hawaii, they have like dances, they have talent shows, they have 
um, they have service projects, they have everything, like get involved, go out there, like service projects, they're the most awesome things, I can tell you, service projects break down barriers, like I got to know people that I would never get to know on campus just from serving with them, so it's an awesome way to make friends. Also you can volunteer for BYUHSA, I'm sure that they mentioned, did they mention that in student life? We have so many opportunities to, um, to get leadership experience here. And you can start even now, while you guys are um, freshmen, or sorry, even if you guys are returning students, get involved. People like to see that on resumes, graduate schools love to see that. Start getting involved with all the things, because we have so much going on here on campus. Also, um, as we were talking about student, um, with the Student Alumni Association, we're over all the student chapters, which were previously known as the cultural clubs. So. Um, has anyone heard of the BYU-Hawaii Culture Night? Yeah, so this is what some, some of the pictures from Culture Night. And um, you can participate in that. And also, next week is World Fest. Now, World Fest is where you can go and check out what your chapter is, because there's a chapter for every person on this campus. So, you've got, um, if you are a student here, you belong to a, a student chapter. So you can check out what your, your student chapter is doing. Also, you can join other student chapters, like if you want to join the Hawaiian student chapter and learn how to hula. Sometimes they have hula classes. Sometimes in the like Chinese, I know in the Chinese student chapter, they teach Chinese like for free. So there's like um, a lot of opportunities to learn and also to um, have fun with the student chapters. And so that's a picture of World Face, and that's um, yeah, culture night. And also, we are um, moving into being more sustainable as a campus, as we're building. You guys saw all those buildings that they're putting up right now? Yeah, they're working on uh, making our campus more sustainable. I know even they changed out a lot of the lights. How many of you, I know a lot of you from Hawaiian schools, you guys probably do a lot of sustainability stuff, like energy audits and stuff. But um, our school's working on it. And one of the cool things about um, sustainability is that we have our own thrift store on campus. How many of you guys have been there? A few of you? Was it cool? It has heaps of stuff there because you know why? Every person that um, that leaves here we all have like accumulate so much stuff while we, we have BYU. They throw, well they don't throw it away, they just donate it to that give and take. So it can have, they have pillows, blankets, sheets, clothes, like anything you name it, like even like jugs, uh, water jugs, and like even textbooks. Some of the, sometimes you can sit, find textbooks in there. So if you need anything at all, feel free to go there. I am not sure about the times that it's open, but they, did they make what, a time available for you guys to go in as new students? Oh, okay. You just, they just did? Oh, okay. They normally have the times up on the bulletin, the student bulletin. So if you check your uh, go.byuh account, you normally can see the times that they're open. But yeah, people are continually donating, so go visit it. It's really cool. If you haven't. Now, the last stage is accepting. After you've adjusted, uh, adjusted is accepting and understanding. So the main thing is to seek to understand each other and to love one another. Now, we're all different. We all come from different countries. Even if we come from the same country, we have different traditions and different ways of behaving in our own families and stuff. Don't get offended. Don't, don't, people, people don't act like that intentionally to offend you. So be understanding of each other. That's, that's how, well, how we can kind of overcome the whole culture shock thing is understand that people are different and that sometimes, and even just express, hey, I'm not sure, like some people, they have different ways of cleaning, they have different what, different ways of, um, <coughs> what else, what else do they have that's different, sorry, I can't even think, I'm like blank right now, but they, there's a lot of things that are different, you know, and so they don't do those things intentionally, so seek to understand each other and love one another. Now, um, this, this quote came to mind when I was putting this together, um, have you guys seen this quote before? by um, Alda Bedner, and it's from his talk, Nothing Shall Offend Them. 
And he says, it, is, uh, it ultimately is impossible for another person to offend you or me. Indeed, believing that another person offended us is fundamentally false. To be offended is a choice we make. It is not a condition of, of inflicted or imposed upon us by someone or something else. So, it's up to you, really. If you be understanding, like I said, it will be a whole lot easier for you. Just understand and just to love one another. It's up to you. To, it's your choice to be offended. Now, to the end. Woo! We're at the end. Um, we have a lot of different food back there. And so the whole purpose of this was to introduce you to the different cultures that you would be introduced to while you're here. And also we have food that you guys can try from different different places like Yuporu from Tonga. How many of you have heard of Lu? A few of you. It's, okay, it looks like mush but it's really nice, trust me. Um, musubi from Hawaii. How many of you had Musubi before? Woo! <laughs> and how many? Oh, well, buffalo wings. For you guys that are international, that might not be not so normal. Um, kimchi. How many of you guys heard of kimchi? This is your opportunity to try it if you haven't. Um, we have sushi from Japan. Most people, I'm sure, have tried sushi. And buggy popo. Does anyone know what that is? That's coconut buns. They're pretty yum. Yeah, and, and also we have egg rolls. We had an argument in our office about where they're from. We think it's from China, but we just put Asia just in case it's not from China. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, thank you so much for um, listening to us. Um, I, hope, I hope that you guys learned some, some things, but just remember, use the resources that you have. We are a resource too. Our office is down the end and on the right if you guys need any help. Um, also, hopefully we can get those emails out from your chapter presidents so that you guys can get to know who they are. And uh, also, if you guys have everyone filled out their survey, yeah? Okay, because that's your ticket to eat, so you take that and then Lop is going to be taking you guys to eat. But before we do that, we will um, say our, our closing prayer.